What's going on everybody? This is Fry. So today we are doing the Mega Grow class tier list. Going to be going through the cards quickly, putting them on the tier list from S to F. F being the lowest, S being the highest. And I'll give you a short explanation of why I put them there. Uh, so Banana Peel is a card that it's actually really hard to put it somewhere on the tier list. Um, I've seen people have so much success uh, with Banana Peel just from being able to move a lane. A very cheap card. Um, which Banana Peel is. I actually need to open up the collection and show you. So again, it's going to be one cost. It's going to conjure a random banana. Bananas can be very good. You have, you know, Banana Bomb. You have Brainana inside the uh, Banana Tribe. Um, it also moves a lane so it can create a good trade. It can also trigger Dino Roars because it's conjuring a card. You can be throwing things into Spike Weeds back there. It just feels like whenever I use Banana Peel, it just feels like, eh. And whenever I see opponents use it, uh, it seems like very good. Uh, for lack of a better place to put, I'm going to put it in B tier. Uh, I think that I have not fully personally realized the potential of this card. When I do play it, though, it seems to be useful. Uh, it's really good at, again, correcting trades and a little Dino Roar and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to move on to Chonk Boy. Uh, Bonk Joy is a solid card. You're typically going to be playing with either as an aggro card, because, again, it does do three damage for one cost that first turn. It's a lot for a one-cost card. You can also use this to counter problematic cards on the uh, zombie side that they play on turn one, particularly uh, Con Man and Headstone Carver are the two cards Bonk Joy really counters. If they're playing cards like Aerobics Instructor, this will even counter a two-cost card. Uh, so pretty high potential card. I'm, you don't run it usually in a lot of decks because in terms of tempo, it's a 3-1 that first turn, but then it turns into a 2-1, so it's not going to be giving you sustained tempo on the field. It's leafy, so you run it in leafy decks. doesn't really affect it very much. Uh, I'm going to put it in B tier. Uh, next, we got Click Peas. Click Peas is one of the best one-drops in the game. Uh, so this is a 1-cost 2-2, two, two, which is solid stats. It's also a bean and also a pea, which is, uh, that, you know, obviously the beans would be helping if you're running Green Shadow, because that's where the bean synergy is in the uh, Smarty class. But peas, you know, in the Mega Grow class, one of the best finishers in the game is Gatling P. Uh, so first of all, it being a, it, de it being a P definitely helps. And then th the cool thing about this card is that it basically wins a trade with every other one drop in the game. Because even if you just, the opponent just played, you know, something like a con man or a cheese cutter, something you have to really remove on turn one, and you play click P in front of it, the click P will die, the one drop they play died, but you've actually won that trade because now inside your deck, you have two sun three attack, three health click peas. Not only the other three click peas you're running in your deck, you're running this as a four of, which you always do, um, but this is also going to be shuffling two more click peas. So you have five really overpowered cards. Two cost three, three as a plant is really, really good. Um, and then besides for that, if they don't, if you're not trading your click peas, if you're just putting this on the field on turn one, and then on turn two or three, you just have another click pee in your hand. I mean, you could just win the game just based on that. Then on turn two, you have two three threes on the field, and if you get a a third one, then you're going to have you know three four fours on the field. Absolutely ridiculous. So. Uh, because this trade, even if this trades with a con man, the con man does one damage, you know, between turns bullseye, I would usually rather take one bullseye damage and have an overpowered deck with five really good cards in it, uh, better than the opponent's cards, uh, rather, you know, it's probably worth it to take that one bullseye damage. Click me being an absolute amazing card, and, and then again, it also is a great base for Gatling P, because it's a one cost P. Absolutely solid. I, I'm going to put this in S tier because the amount of Mega Grow decks, again, I'm usually rating it not based on how powerful it is, but based on how often should you be really looking to put these cards in your deck. And any Mega Grow deck, without basically without exception, uh, I'm not going to be mad if I see Click P in it because, again, I don't run in every single deck, but uh, it's a solid turn one control. It's so much potential. It wins trades with everything. I'm putting Click P in S tier. Next, we got Half Banana. Half Banana is only useful in a Banana Synergy deck. There's just not a whole lot of bananas. Like, if you just type in the word banana, see how many Yeah, you can see all them. But uh, that's all the bananas, guys. There's, <laughs> there's nothing else. So, you know, it can make your Banana Source Rex maybe into a 4-4. It's a 1 cost 2-2. Two, two. It can be used as a control card. There's just not a whole lot of chance. If there were more bananas, one of my uh, propositions, of course, is just to make this fruit. 
all fruits gain one one then you can have a fruit tribe and just turn all the bananas into fruits that would be smart you can make your brain nana into a five four i mean it's a little buff but it's not really uh usually worth running half banana in a deck we have had limited success um with banana decks but uh, you're you're basically you really should not be in general running banana synergy i'll, I'll put it in I'll put it in low C tier or high D tier. I'm going to put it in D tier because of just how useful it is. It's really not. Uh, Party Time, a very not useful card because even though it has a really... It's a 1 cost 2-2, two, two, so good stats for a 1 cost card. It can be used to control your opponent's cheese gutters. Um, and then you... You know, it has a pretty strong ability, but the ability is very difficult to pull off because Party Time not only needs to leave, live on the field, but then you need to have your Repeat Moss or your Bananasaurus Rex, something that is doing bonus attacks for that also to live and for that to, you know, not trade evenly with something because then it dies and never does the bonus attack. It needs to uh, actually do it. You know, playing this together with Repeat Moss on turn five, it's just too slow to be drawing cards usually. I've seen some success with Party Time every once in a while, having like a little early game control and some access to card draw is okay, but I, I really don't think this is worth running in most decks. I'll put it in D tier. Peapod is just, you know, the first turn it's a 1 1, and the second turn it's a 2 2, 1 cost 2 2. So it reaches par from living on the field two turns, and then. On the um, <laughs> on the third turn, all of a sudden it has good stats of being a one cost three three, um, and because it's so difficult for it to live those first couple turns, and it's so easy to remove the turn it's played, it becomes a very not useful card. I, I would say in general, I, I know some of you are gonna be mad at this, but I'm gonna put it in D tier because even in P decks, I just don't run Peapod. Uh, I think it's actually just too weak for what it does, even though it looks like it has a lot of potential. The chances of it getting there. And because of how easy it is to remove, it just it, it, it just usually is not worth it. Uh, maybe run this with Torchwood, though, for beginning players to run this with Torchwood. It could be good because opponents aren't really running efficient small removal. Uh, Pea Shooter is an F tier. You should never run it. Sweet Potato. Uh, Sweet Potato, again, <laughs> it's going in deep. Man, the D tier is getting full already. I don't know, man. One cost. It doesn't draw you the card like Banana Peel does. Okay, so it has some health. It's a team up. It's kind of like a little jack of all traits cards, but really, the reason I'm putting it in D tier is not because it's terrible when you conjure it. Sometimes it can give value. It just why are you putting this in your deck? Like it doesn't. It never justifies a deck spot. Why do you need to be moving a zombie to another lane and have a one cost zero three on the field? Two circumstantials going in D tier. Torchwood. So Torchwood, again, in P decks, obviously P's behind it get um, extra to attack. It's kind of very cool when you have, you know, you're putting a Gatling P behind it because that's doing a 7 attack bonus attack. Even cooler if you play it in conjunction with the Pod Fighter. So you play Pod Father Fighter on turn 5 and then the Torchwood. Or you wait till turn 6 and just stick a Torchwood in front of it. That represents a 5 damage bonus attack since this will have all the extra attack. Then when you start playing here next door, it's cool as team up. And then when we're playing here next door, this will be doing five damage bonus attacks. Uh, there's also you know you can play together with three Peter in the yeah in the brainy in the smarty class, which is not a good idea. Very bad card even with Torchwood. Um, so yeah, Torchwood. Uh, you're typically not running this in P decks. Typically in P decks, you're just running your early in P's, which are very strong. I'll show you the strong ones besides for click P coming up. Uh, and you're typically just running Gatling P, running Torchwood. Again, every once in a while it could be useful. I'll put it in C tier though, because um it's not it's it's kind of just circumstantial to just have a whole deck slot filled with, you know, if you have this on turn one, it obviously it doesn't do anything by itself. That needs to be combined. And how much does that actually do to justify a spot in your deck? I'll put it in a uh, in C tier. Umbrella Leaf. Umbrella Leaf is a card that people suggest me to use. Let's say, Fry, do Umbrella Leaf with Soul Patch. Then you can't die because the Soul Patch is untrickable. It's a really flawed card. First of all, it's a 1 cause 0 1. You got to start with that. The untrickable, unfortunately, this keyword is so uh, not useful because a lot of the times that your uh, things are going to be removed is not going to be from tricks. Uh, it's going to be from. Uh, minions or from attacks or from bonus attacks. It doesn't protect anything uh, from a lot of the way. Again, every once in a while you can spend this to, you know, protect a card and it really is able to grow out of control. But uh, in general, Umbrella Leaf having a zero cost, zero one in your deck is not very useful. Um, you know, can you run in leafy decks? It's a flower, who cares? 
Uh, I'm going to put it in D tier because, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? If they have laser base alpha, if they have teleport Zon, I don't know what they're doing in the late game. Teleport Zombot, um, it, it's just, I, I don't know. Every time Ember Leaf is, just doesn't really do enough. Uh, Black IP. I don't know why this card is over here. This guy's got to be somewhere down here. We'll get to him. We'll get to it. Black IP is one of the best cards in the game because even against trick decks, if you're going against a mortician brainstorm running a lot of tricks and don't have a way to deal three damage, this is unstoppable. It's absolutely game defining. You'll take over the game with your black IPs because it makes your opponent's tricks so inefficient. But really, at the end of the day, every single hero has tricks because they all have superpowers, except for Hugh Giganticus, who's weird that only one of his superpowers is a trick. Uh, a two cost three force, even if they play one trick, a two cost three four plant is mind blowingly insanely OP. Uh, you can put these in basically any deck, you're going to get extreme value. It's also OP. So you also have the Gatling piece synergy. Uh, easy S tier for Black IP. Cabbage Pult is a not useful card. It has unbelievable stats when you put it on heights. Two costs, two, four. By the way, a three, three is better because it's more of an aggro card. It's a card they have to answer. It can trade well against a two, three. What does a two, four trade well against? It trades well against a, a, a three, two, I guess. But, you know. Um, I, I had a notion of running Cabbage Bolt in order to counter Cyborg, which was a common card used in the tournament. The fact this is limited to heights really gives it a disadvantage. I feel like if this was just a 2 cost 2 four leafy plant, and that's what it was, I think this would have more use. But the fact it's fighting for that heights lane, and if you run two in a deck, all of a sudden the second one becomes useless, or if you're forced to play a different plant on heights, which is also very often... Uh, this also then becomes a 2 cost 1 3, which is absolute garbage. Uh, I'll put it in D tier. Next, we got Coffee Grounds. So, Coffee Grounds is not a very good environment because the uh, it, the, the ability, a double strike, so this seems like a whole extra bonus attack for 2 sun. That seems good, but it's very hard to pull off this double strike. And it's because it only works when you play this. It doesn't do anything immediately when you play it. You have to wait till the attack phase. And the zombies are going to, first of all, have a chance to cover this with one of their little one-cost environments before it does anything. But even if they don't remove this environment, you also have to have a plant in the lane, okay? And that plant has to not even trade with what's opposing. If you have a 3-3 against something with 3 attack, uh, it will never end up doing that double strike. So it's a very difficult condition to pull off and the reason why it's pretty low. Uh, we have had some success with this to combining with vegetation mutation with other things if you want to see the decks that I've done recently with coffee grounds. Um, you can look it up. I, we have had limited success with this. It also is very good with Chumpzilla um, with the um, with, with uh, Cosmos. Cosmos is one cost two two that will grow um, every single time you play an environment. So you're basically playing your Cosmos on turn one um, and then you're playing the, the, the double strike environment, the coffee grounds on turn two. This will turn this to a three, three with double strike, which will usually do that bonus attack. Uh, in that deck, I think we were also running like haunted pumpkin, which again, if you can pull it off, it's very difficult for the pumpkin, you know, to live. But if it does, it's, you know, you put a little team up, like a little buddy in front of it, this will end up doing a four damage bonus attack, which is really, really good. Uh, so again, it has its uses, not the greatest environment in the world. I will leave it in C tier. Next, we got Double Mint. So Double Mint is a, not a good card. For a 2 cost 1, 2 is absolutely terrible stats. And the next turn, turning into a 2, 4 is like, okay, yeah, that's Cabbage Pult stats. Uh, and that's, you know, if it lives to the next turn. They don't, this dies to everything on turn 2. Bungie Plumber, Rolling Stone, Nibble even makes us have 0 attack. So it's going to double into 0. Um... I really have never found the great use. I know there was like this leafy, you know, Discord deck that was flying around for a while. I didn't even like the double mint in that. I've never really found the great use for doubled mint. It's really sad because this, this card looks like it has so much potential. But even at the end of the day, by the way, people are like, well, you double mint, just add some stats to it. Play more cards. Like, you know, fertilize, just pump more stats into it, and then those stats will double. But removal, but at the end of the day, even if this does live for three turns, or you do pump it with extra stats, removal is really efficient in this game. And I feel like that's one of the things that really kills double mint's high potential. Because at the end of the day, it's just stats, and a rocket science will always take it out. 
I, obviously, if they're just running fruitcake as their removal, and this gets beyond seven health, it's really good. But every once in a while, let's take over a game. I'll, I'll give it C tier because every once in a while, that moment really, really is good. But uh, you shouldn't really be looking to run this in your decks. Fire Pea Shooter is just a two cost three two, which is better stats than double mint when the turn it's played. The stats of that turn, without having to pump any more turns or cards into it, is uh, very underrated. Um, I, I would say this is very outclassed by the other two cost peas, meaning Black IP, um, Split P is better. It has more attack. Usually, it's better. Um, even sometimes Sweet P can often be better if you need to be able to deal with like amphibious lane threats and stuff like that. I would say this is a solid card, but only for budget players. Um, it's actually better than all these cards I put in D tier because at the end of the day, I mean, three co two costs three two. It's an aggro card. If you have any Gatlings, this will also be a base for it. It does have that peace energy. Uh, so I'll, I'll put it in C tier just for because for budget players, I think this is actually uh, an okay solid card. Lily of the Valley. So this is a really tough one. Um, Lily of the Valley, obviously, when it came out, was a one, two cost one three, which made it very easy to live and get that value the next turn. Nowadays, at two cost one two, you're almost never playing this on turn two, unless they play a teleportation zombie or some two cost card that will allow you to just play this and it be safe that they won't even have that one extra brain. You can then spam this on turn two. Typically, you're playing this on turn three, and you're playing it together with a one cost card. One cost cards that would work very well with this. Anything, even a one cost, you know, you'll you'll get the value. This is worth it to be playing even with a. Even with a click fee, you know, you'll have a one cost 4-4 four, four on the field. So Lily of the Valley will essentially be your Embiggen. It gives 2-2 two, two stats to something which can very often be good. If you're playing it together with Shroom for 2 and Captain Combustible or with team ups, very, very good with team ups. So then obviously you're going to be adding that 2-2 two, two stats twice. So you can play Lily Shroom for 2, Lily into a couple of team ups on, you know, or you can play like, sorry, Lily together with, let's say, a Puff Shroom and a one drop. Uh, you can play Lily with a um, Little Buddy, if it's the Chomzilla, with a one-drop. And we have had success like this, if you want to see my Lily of the Valley decks. Again, that I've done the last uh, you know year and a half since I made the last tier list. You can look those up on the Frime Up Gaming channel. Um, so, again, how often are you really putting in your decks? It actually does have some legit strats. I'm going to put it in B for now. Um, I think it has a very high potential in the right deck and the right strategy. Uh, but I don't think you're really looking to run this on a lot of decks. And again, do not get into the habit of running this in a deck to play on turn two and hope that you're going to get an amazing turn three play because it usually will not survive turn two. It dies to everything, dies to beam me up, dies to bungee plumber, dies to absolutely freaking everything. On turn two, I'll put it in B tier. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, sol it's a solid card that has its uses, but don't be running it too often. Uh, P-Patch. The main problem with P-Patch is the fact that removal is so efficient in this game. It's a 2 cost 2-2, two, two, which is terrible stats for a 2 cost card. Now, the only thing it can do is give 2-2 two, two to something, but that card can easily be removed with a rocket science or with just any removal card, uh, even a fruitcake. Very efficient. Uh, unlike Lily of the Valley, if they use that removal card, the P-Patch is completely removed, uh, as opposed to Lily of the Valley, which I just put in B tier. Um that card uh the lily of the valley is not removed they'll need a separate card to deal with the lily of the valley so lily of the valley is better um you know it seems cool to play this together with a card that does a lot of damage like a repeat moss or a gatling p but to have this two cost two to survive on the field and have that part of your win condition very difficult that your win condition play all of a sudden costs two more usually you want to be setting up your piece and then just be throwing the gatling p <laughs> on it on turn five rather than waiting for a turn Seven combo. Not a super useful card. Um, is it more or less useful? I'm going to put it in D tier. It's not a very useful card. Um, if you look at one cost, this would be very good. This would be really, really good at one. Split P is a great card. First of all, two cost four one. So anything that's going to be doing four damage on turn two, it's an irreplaceable aggro card. Its ability, I don't know if this ability was supposed to be a downside, but. Um, it actually is an upside, because taking little pings of one damage, that will be charging your block meter, and probably will end up preventing a more than one damage later when your opponent actually does some damage to you, because you have a full block meter already. Worst case scenario, this is just going to be giving you 
uh, extra superpowers, which is going to help you in the momentum of the game. You're going to get zero cost superpowers uh, because you'll be able to play them on block. If you're obviously running this with Captain Combustible and you have repeat loss in the deck, getting your superpowers really, really useful, even if it's Grass we'll Knuckles, getting time to shine, you know, streams. wins games. Thank you, Ellie Broy, for subscribing. Uh, a very solid card. You can put this in any aggro deck. You can put it in P decks. This can also just sometimes trade with a big guy. Like, if they play Bounty Hunter on the field, if you have Split P, you've just answered their card. I know they'll draw, but you've basically taken out a huge chunk of tempo off of the board uh, with just a two-cost card. So, really solid, good aggro card. It's going to go in A tier. Next, we have Sweet Peas. So, this doesn't see a lot of play. If there were more Toxic Waste Imps, you'd see more Sweet Peas. Um, uh, it, it's again, it's a two cost two three. You just switching lanes for plants. I don't know how good this card is. I'm gonna give it solid C tier because uh, it definitely has its uses. Even on top tier, if you really need to deal with toxic waste, then that's a pretty good answer to it. Vegetation mutations are really tough one again. If you have multiple minions on heights like team ups, it's gonna be really good. If you have environments on the ground. Um, then you can actually buff an entire field with Vegetation Mutation. We've had a lot of success with Vegetation Mutation lately. I've even found success just by playing any one drop. Any one costs 2-2. Two, two. You play it on heights. If it lives, you can play Vegetation Mutation. All of a sudden, you have a 4-4 four, four on the field on turn 2. Um, which, again, they could remove the next turn. If they have removal, they could remove it with Fruitcake. But very often... They'll, um, this will be, end up make that card do a lot of damage. I don't know, I don't know why, but it just seems to have worked. People usually aren't looking for their hard removal cards and their mulligans. To be able to get that on turn two, that big card, um, is very often going to be, um, a good thing. You're going to be able to get a lot of early game damage. Obviously, with, you know, team ups and shrimp for two and stuff, there's a very high potential card. I don't really know where to put this. I think it's a little bit better than these Bs. Should I put it in A? Is it B? Is it B? Growing cards in general, again, does make them die to removal, so it's a little circumstantial. It's either low A or high B. I'll put it in high B tier. Next, we got Captain Cucumber. And Captain Cucumber, it's kind of just, like, inexplicable why this card is so freaking good. But, I mean, it's conjuring legendaries that cost one less. Once this draws two cards you have now two really powerful legendary cards that are cheaper even bad legendaries if you reduce one it's cost by one they all of a sudden become very good and the good legendaries obviously they become ridiculously overpowered um and you know it has a really high stat line i guess it's not that hard to understand why this is good because it has a very high stat line three cost one four most heroes again hardy heroes and nibble will be able to deal with this but uh, other than other than those, most heroes can't really deal four damage on turn three, and even the next turn, it'll, four damage is a lot of damage to deal. Uh, you obviously can combine this with any uh, besides for the fact it's conjuring cards, and combine this with any other conjures. Those conjures become more efficient because they're conjuring something that costs one less. You combine this with Dino Roars, anything from Bananasaurus Rex, which is in its tribe, a very good play is to do Captain Cucumber to the left on turn three, Bananasaurus Rex you play to the right on turn four. This will be triggering Dino Roars, giving you a lot more stats on the field. I I'm going to put this in the same tier. I think I put this the first time in S tier because at the end of the day, you can build decks around it. Any deck that any deck, if you just threw a couple of Captain Cucumbers into it, it usually will not make the deck worse. It is a card that will be giving you finishers. Uh, I'm gonna put it in S tier because again, you can you can you can put it in. It's so versatile. You can put this in almost any deck, and it will be at least okay. Sometimes will be insanely OP. I mean, the worst nightmares when you, as a zombie player, are playing against the Captain Cucumber that you can't answer. Like once it starts drawing that second card, and you still haven't dealt with it, man. The game's over. You're not going to win the game. I mean, it's just, it's a dominant card. S tier. Next, we got Cosmic P. It's so freaking bad. It's so bad. It looks like it has potential, but the game devs, when it came, they did a lot of great things in PvP Heroes. When it came to the Cosmic cards, they dropped the freaking ball. What is this piece of... We call this Ohio P because... It's a three cost one one. 
one one stats. Oh, oh, you know what else it has besides for one one? Oh, good. So now instead of pinging your opponent's block meter for one every turn, you're going to ping it twice. The best thing you can do when your opponent plays Cosmic Pee on the Field is just take a nap and use those superpowers to wreck them. This is so bad. What it conjures a P and it gets double strike. Like, for three costs? For three costs, you gotta get a random, sometimes useless, pea shooter, also a 1-1 one, one that has double strike. Absolute garbage card. Don't even think of spending more in a three-cost card of investing more cards to start growing this, or to start playing Torchwoods. This is never okay. It's never good. It's going in F-tier. will always be in F-tier. I hate Cosmic P. Back to Ohio. No, back at Ohio. We got Fertilize. Fertilize the three costs three three. It has the same problem with the entire Mega Grow class is that if you invest a second card, if you invest a second card into an already card, they're just going to use one card to remove both of them, like a rocket science, like a anything that removes, like a deadly minion, like a fruitcake. So fertilize usually will never see play in a deck. Um, at least grocery, which I'll see in a second, is a little bit. Better because it puts that 2-1 on the field, which can sometimes be useful. Again, every once in a while, Fertilize can be okay, but it's going in D tier with all the rest of these cards. It will almost be an F tier, but you're 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 basically should never be running Fertilize. Well, it's better than Cosmic Peace. So I'll put it in D tier. All right, Flourish. This is a really slow way of drawing two cards. This card should just cost two straight up. If you just look at superpowers, you know, ultimate abilities are basically a three cost card. And then secondary abilities are a two-cost card. There is a secondary ability called Holoflora that does exactly this. It draws two cards. This should be a two-cost card. It's so not useful at three. It's just so expensive to be drawing cards in this game on turn three. There's so many better options. You're almost never running Flourish, man. Every once in a while, if you're building up to like a big onion ring and you really want to draw cards and you run too flourish in the deck i won't yell at you and that's the only reason i'm putting in d rather than f but don't run flourish guys got great power so a very difficult card to combine again because it's just a three cost card kind of like fertilize that is adding stats it also is conjuring you a card so at least there's something at least if they remove that big card you still got something from it um Doubling us cards plants can sometimes be really useful. Every once in a while, we have a good grape power deck. You know, you do Astrocado, set that up. If they don't remove it, you do grape power plus plant food, you know, and you end up doing like an 11, <laughs> 11 attack bonus attack. It's not great. It's not great. Not a great card. I'll put it in C tier. Uh, it's just very, very expensive to pull off as part of a combo which is the combo card is very expensive to be part of a combo all right we got grocery grocery is better than fertilized i mentioned before because at least it has that two one it doesn't have the same stats of the buff but sometimes this two one can block something importantly sometimes it can kill a whole minion so the fact this is doing something besides for adding stats to another plant uh makes it more useful it's more on the lines of let's say um more on the lines of let's say and begin i think this card actually has potential i've seen people do decks where they do like rotobag on turn two and then grocery on turn three and all of a sudden you have you know a four attack and two lanes i'll put it in c tier because i think it's it's better than these d tier cards i really you know we used to use grocery a lot together with lily of the valley lily on two grocery three in order to protect the lily and then you have the lily for another turn that was always a good play but obviously again you don't play lily of the valley on turn two anymore since the only has two health I'll put it in C tier because it actually is a useful card to be running a couple of these. I wouldn't run, ever run this as a four, but I'll run a couple in the deck. Uh, could be useful. Next, we got Moonbeam. Moonbeam is a very confusing card. It has really high stats. Three cost two five is an extremely good stat line. It also has the ability of shuffling magic beanstalks into your deck, which is not super useful. It's only each time it attacks. I like the Lime of Pluridon ability better because Dino Roar, sometimes you're just drawing all these cards. Also, this ability on a one-cost card is much stronger because you can get those Magic Bean stocks shuffled into your deck sooner. I just don't know what this, where, what, I mean, this is a good card. Like, if you conjure, it's fine, but I don't know what deck to put this in. It's too expensive as a bean to be, you know, together with Admiral Navy Bean. Um, it's just 
Why do you want a 2-5 in your deck? You're going just for Magic Beanstalks? That's not a good idea. If that was a good deck, this, this card would be amazing, but it's not. It's just so average. <laughs> I'll put it in C tier. Next, Muscle Sprout. A really okay, a difficult card to get a lot of value from because, again, for three cost cards, it's a little expensive. And then, you know, the turn you play it, it's a 3-2. Terrible stats. So you can't really set this up on turn three unless you have a zero cost card in your hand, which is only Pop Shroom and Little Buddy, uh, which are in different classes. Both of them are in different classes, different than Mega Gross. So you can only run Muscle Sprout together with one of those cards at a time. Okay, so you have maybe four zero cost cards. And what you're, you have to like almost build this into a deck with a lot of small cards for it to be good. You got to then have Shroom for twos or a lot of one drops or a lot of beans or something like that in order to small cards are in a growth. But then what do you have at the end of the day? You have a three cost, very high stat card. Then you got to start doing, but like it doesn't have, you know, strike through. It doesn't have any way of going face. So the reason Muscle Sprout is not very good is because it needs to be built, be built into a very specific type of deck. It's not self-sustainable. It's not a good card in itself. You need to kind of build deck around it, but is it really even good in a Swarm deck? You probably just want to run Swarm. You don't want to be running Muscle Sprout. I've tried it in Swarm decks before. have not had a lot of success. Every once in a while, Muscle Sprout could be good. I almost don't even want to put it in C tier. I'll put it in C tier because it's on the same tier as these other. I'm looking at these. Below average cards we're putting in C tier. It's, it's better than the ones in D. I'll put it in C. Next, we got Repeater. I feel like Muscle Sprout should be a better card. If you guys, you know, I'd love to find the great Muscle Sprout deck. Seems like it should be good, but what do I know? <coughs> Repeater, man. Yeah, Repeater's a 3 cost 2 2. Terrible stats. It has double strikes, and then you gotta buff more. It's only good when you buff more cards into it or put a Torchwood in front of it it's better than cosmic p sometimes repeater can be good it's so bad stats though man it's either low d or high f i think because we're running out of room in the d tier I'll just put it in f. <laughs> now it, practically though this is an f tier card never run repeat think of one deck where repeater is actually viable just viable just like decent i can't think of any so if you think of one let me i'm obviously in low like, for budget players every once in a while, I mean, I'm not talking budget. I'm talking about before rank 10, Repeater sometimes with Torchwood takes over a game. But once you get past rank 10, <laughs> not really. Next, we got Podfather. Podfather is a 3 cost 2-2. Two, two. It sucks. It dies to everything. It dies to Bungie. It dies to superpowers. If you set this up on turn 3, it's garbage. If you wait till turn 4, so you basically have a 3 cost 2-2 two, two buff. So it's like a 3 cost... It's a three cost freaking embiggen. Three cost vegetation mutation. Just run Lily if you need a buff. <laughs> Just run Lily if the valley don't run Podfather. Every once in a while, again, you're against Super Brains who doesn't have any small removal. You can play Podfather in the field. He doesn't have his beat me up. Then you start playing a bunch of peas. Just a bunch of them. And they, uh,. And, you know, you take over the game. Again, we have had some success running Podfather, but I, I, I'd say this is really a C tier. I almost want to put this in D just to make a point, though, because this is not... P decks are about Gatling P and Black Guy P and maybe Torchwood. They're not about Podfather. All right, you know, I'll put in this... I, I can't put it lower than Muscle Sprout, right? I can't put it lower than Moonbeam and, and, and Grow... Okay, I'll put it in C tier. Next... Next! Typical Beanstalk. Finally found a home for Typical Beanstalk. It's a 3 cost 3-3. Three, three. It's just a vanilla. The chances of... You know, what this should say is when played in the lane of a leafy plant or next to a leafy plant. Uh, kind of like the text on Pod Fighter. Uh, but it has to be next to, so it can't even be in like some kind of team-up situation with a leafy. Um... And then, and then the day it's going to conjure your leafy card. And leafy card. Leafy decks are not good. Leafy synergy is not good. And then this condition is so bad. Oh, it's so bad. It's in D tier. Next, banana split. So again, even in banana synergy decks, you still don't necessarily run banana split. You have to have lanes. You know, four cost four four is like eh. This condition of when it dies, first of all, they don't have to kill this card. Uh, they can just develop something way stronger for four costs in a different lane, and they win. 
Um, you know, you have to have like open lanes for these. Every once in a while, you have banana split. And then it'll make these little two, two half bananas. The half banana, you know, the length to the right will kill something. And then plus you have another banana in your hand and you get a big chunk of value. But at the end of the day, what deck do you run this in? Where does banana split fit in the meta? And the answer is nowhere. Uh, uh. It's the same place as all the rest of these C tier cards. So let's put it there. Next, oh, this is a good card. This is a good card. Four cost three, three. So very bad stats. Um, for a four cost card, but it has the double strike, and double striking you know, one or two damage is bad. Double striking three damage is very good, and then this will also grow every single turn. Um, after that, you can obviously again combine it with any conjure cards, like I described before with the Captain Cucumber. Uh, this is a menace, and the fact that it cannot be chump locked, it'll always, you know, if you put a smaller card in front of it, it'll always be breaking through with the double strike. Banana Source Rex is a good card. I'm not going to actually put it in, in S tier. I'll put it in A. It's a solid part of a lot of decks. A very solid four cost card. Again, if you have just a little bit of Conjure, a little bit of Banana Feel, uh, this card will go a long way because, again, you're not investing and in stacking more cards to make this bigger into it. You're not fertilizing this card. You're just anyway playing your game, playing your other cards like Captain Cucumber, Banana Peel. They get value. And the Banana Source Rex grows into an absolute beast as a result. Next. Next, we got Plant Food, and Plant Food is going to be the easiest card to put in S tier because it is the win condition of the entire Mega Grow class. It is very difficult to find a Mega Grow deck that doesn't have Plant Food in it. I guess if you're running Chumpzilla and a lot of ramp, a lot of late game cards, and you're running Cobb Cannon as your finisher, then great. Even in that deck, having two Plant Foods is usually going to be a very good thing. Uh, plant food does, again, any big card, especially a Mega Grow class that kind of relies on growing cards. Uh, this will dominate. This will do a big four, five, six damage bonus attack, making all the big cards into your decks, essentially turning those cards into finishers. Um, that's why Plant Food's a really good card. Plant Food can also be used to make a loss trade into a gain trade. If your guy has five attack, something with six health in front of it, all of a sudden this card deletes that card, so it can be used as an efficient removal card as well, and allowing your card, which has now recently grown to six health, I have to go face for that huge amount of attack during the attack phase. Um, put plant food in every single Mega Grow deck. It will never be a pro. Almost. <laughs> It'll never be. You guys could probably go through my videos and through the deck list and see what percentage. I'm guessing about 9 out of 10 of my decks will have plant food in it. Um, usually you want to run plant food as a 3 of typically because, you know, 4 if you have too many plant foods, not enough cards. Not a good idea, but uh, usually 3 is better than 2 because... Usually having an extra plant food is better than having one too few plant foods. Uh, Repeat Moss is only good with Captain Combustible because really, what tricks are you going to use Repeat Moss with? You're going to use it with Banana Peel. You're going to use it with, 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 you know, Banana Bomb. It's only doing two damage bonus attacks. So you got to grow the attack of Repeat Moss. Uh, you can run it with, with Vegetation Mutation. Um, which is an option, but Captain Combustible, of course, has superpowers that grow Repeat Moss's attack by four. Uh, he also has Embiggen, which will grow its attack by two. Uh, and then he has Time to Shine, which will make it do a whole bunch of extra bonus. Make it do two bonus attacks instead of one. Uh, again, really, uh, we've tried Repeat Moss with Chumpzilla, where you ramp and you play some tricks, but you're ramping to combos then. I've tried it with Grass Knuckles. It's only really ever worked with Captain Combustible. With Captain Combustible, though... It's, it's S tier. I mean, you can throw Repeat Moss into literally any Captain Combustible deck, and just because of Captain Combustible's superpowers, Repeat Moss becomes the best card in the deck. Where to put this on the list? So when it comes to non-Captain Combustible heroes, when it comes to Green Shadow and Grass Knuckles and Chomzilla, I I'll put this down in, in, in D tier. In, 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 I'll put it in the same place where I put Doubleman in C tier. But for Captain Combustible, it's S tier. So I'll just drop it in A. You guys know what I'm doing here. Savage Spinach is, you know, a decently statted card. It needs, it requires you to build your deck with leafy cards in order for it to really be useful. And leafy cards, I'll show you just on the tier list where the leafy cards are. Here's a leafy card. Leafy, leafy. This is the main problem with Savage Spinach. You got Bonk Choi, which is a decent leafy card. 
and double mirrors, uh, which is really an L leafy card. That's the problem, is that it, it requires you to build a bad deck in order for this to be useful. Again, we have had some success with Savage Spinach. We've done it with Green Shadow. Then you have a four attack, you know, um, shooting Starfruit that does like 20 damage and wins the game. Um, it's way better. You, this is basically just outclassed by Onion Rings. Onion Rings is a card that you can build with any deck, any cards, doesn't matter, and turns them to 4-4s. Four this is going to be turning your big cards, first of all, not giving them any extra health, only giving them extra attack, and it requires you to have a bad deck. Uh, that's the problem with Savage Bench. I'll put it in C tier because, again, it has its uses, but... Uh, yeah, if there were way better leafy cards, then Savage Spinach would have a lot more potential because then it would be in a good deck rather than being in a bad deck. Sky Shooter, man. So it's a 4 cost 5 4, which is actually pretty messed stats for a, for a five, 4 cost card. Plus, it needs to be on heights. It's competing for the heights lane, man. Uh, F tier. Next, Gatling P. Gatling P is going to be one of the easiest S tier. I mean, this is, this is such a good card, man. So 5 costs 10 damage. It has a little bit of weak stats as being only a 5-4, but if they don't answer it, this thing absolutely... I mean, it deletes half of your opponent's health in one turn. Hello? For 5 costs. That's what you call a finisher. Plus, even though it didn't even need the P evolution thing... This will do an automatic 5 damage uh, any P, so it will either destroy an opposing zombie, it will hit him in the water lane if you're running Grass Knuckles, because you have an amphibious P, uh, which is called Sting Bean, which you can play, but even on the ground, it combines very well. Again, th th this is like the opposite of Savage Spinach. Savage Spinach is in a deck with cards that suck, because leafy cards suck. Peas are amazing. Look at peas. Peas are some of the best cards in the game, especially these three ones you can see on top. The Black IP, the Split P, the Click P, and you just put Gatling P. Any Mega Grow, any Mega Grow hero, it doesn't matter which one. It could be Grass Knuckles, it could not. Any Mega Grow, you just put those three cards and Gatling as a finisher, you are going to win games like nobody even, nobody even asked how many games you won. Easy S tier. Here's Onion Rings. Onion Rings is going to be put in a very specific type of deck. You're going to have low cards, a little bit of early game control, maybe some card draw, and then Onion Rings turns your entire life into a 4-4. Um, this is very, very powerful. I mean, if you have Onion Rings in a Chompzilla deck, and you've got your little costs, you know, little buddies, so all of a sudden on turn 5, you're playing two four fours on the field, and then every other card you play, all of a sudden is a 4-4. Four, four. It could be a 4-4 four, four Sunflower. It could be <coughs> a 4-4, four, four, um, Ketchup Mechanics. So if they have two guys in the field, instead of this being a 3-3, three, three, this will have a base stats of 4-4. Four, four. It's now a 6-6. Six, six. Um, if just even 4-4 four, four Captain Cucumber is so good. Uh, four, four, any one cost card at 4-4 four, four obviously is going to be ridiculous. You can build entire decks around Onion Rings. It does require, you know, specific kind of deck building. It's not the jack of all trades like these S-tier cards. They can just put wherever. Um, I mean, a Gatling P, you're typically putting them with P's, but you technically could run it as the late game in a deck with, honestly, just a... Yeah, even one or two peas. You always want to run peas in your deck. Anyway, I'm putting in eights here because it's not quite as versatile, but again, this is a really, really strong card, and uh, to build decks around it, go for it, because onion ring decks are very, very strong. Plucky Clover is not a good card. Um, for five costs and five health and a very unpredictable amount of attack, uh, most event cards, I think this actually might be a useful thing, is just to go to the plant side, and type in the word event just to see what the average stats of these are going to be. So just look at what the event cards, they're mostly ones, twos. Every once in a while you have some, again, some expensive ones, but it's mostly going to be lower cost, you know, one, two, or three. So you're going to end up with a five cost, three, five, four, five, two, five. And then every once in a while, it's a 5 cost 6 5, but even a 5 cost 6 5 is not great. It does conjure you a card, but again, that card is going to be unpredictable. The event class, um, I don't know why I quit the collection and then went back into it there. I kind of just had a major brain fart. But um, the event class is actually a good set of cards. Uh, they're, they're, they're actually very, <laughs> very strong, so that is a little bit of a saving grace for Plucky Clover. Thank you to CrossFit for 74 months. Coming in strong. Where do we put Cl Plucky Clover, man? In terms of actually running this in a deck, though, 
<sighs> it's low C, high D tier on this tier list, man. I'm putting it in D tier because as a five, why are you putting a five cost card draw card? It's basically like Starch Lord, but it only draws one card, you know? <laughs> it's in D tier. Next, we've got Pod Fighter. So, very difficult card. You have to kind of build a whole deck around it. Running little cards, team ups, buffs, Torchwood. Uh, we have had some success with Pod Fighter. Uh, if you want to look up those decks, they'll, they'll, those decks will speak for themselves. I'll put it in C tier along with all these cards that, you know, there's a deck for them. They have a home, but it's not very good. It's just very expensive, very low stats for five cost and requires you to build a whole deck around it. And then and it usually just gets removed too early or your win condition ends up being too late that you die by then. Audit Powerhouse is not a good card. I've tried so many times. I mean, every once, you know, we've done basically meme decks with Potted Powerhouse where you're trying to grow, 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 and then it's just a five-cost big stat card, and then you need a bonus attack on top of it or for this to do it. It's not good. Uh, people are like, well, run it with Pepper MD, run it with Vegetation Mutation and Buff Shroom and Mushrooms. It's never worth it. There's always better win conditions, especially because this only is going to get all those buffs if it's in your hand. If you top deck one of these, in your starting hands every game, then it would be a good card. If this had an ability that this always just appears in your starting hand, I would say it would be fine. Just run one in the deck. This would actually be a very good solid win condition. But, you know, you're late game cards. You want to draw them later. You know what I mean? Trickster is like the only card that needs to be in your starting hands in order to be good. And Trickster, compare this card to Trickster. Trickster usually costs less and does way more than Potted Powerhouse. Uh, this card's going in D tier. I should probably put it in F. It's low D tier, though. Every once in a while, it's really good. So that's why it's going in D. Red Planet's a really, really hard one. I've seen a lot of success with this, running a couple. You know, you hit them with, with, with this in a time where they can't remove the card. It really does a lot, especially if you have a Banana Store Strike, something with Double Strike. Even every small card benefits a lot from Red Planet. It's a really expensive environment. It can be covered immediately. <laughs> By zombie environments that cost one. So it's automatically countered by literally every zombie environment in the entire game. Uh, it's also countered by removal. It also You also need a card to be on the ground or for this to be useful. I don't know. Every once in a while I see it be useful. But I don't think it's a good card. So I'll put it in the every once in a while it's useful. But it's not a good card tier. And then C tier. <coughs> it's just because of the sheer uh, raw amount of stats. Adding 5-5 five, five to something, and then that doing one big attack, potentially. That goes a long way. That's the only reason it's in C and not in D. Withvine is a lovely card. 5-5, five, 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 average plant stats, and then you move as zombie. I wish this was good. I wish there were good decks for Withvine, unfortunately. As a 5-cost card, your 5-cost card should be your finishers. That should be your Gatling feed. It should be your, your real, you know, your onion ring. Something you're actually building the deck around. Withvine doesn't really do anything to win games. Uh, it's lovely sometimes you conjure this from a Sarge Lord or from wherever. Um, and it's nice. A lovely, lovely card. I love Whipfine, but it sucks. It's in D tier. Next, you got... Like, for budget players, I would say if you need some more like in, like a little bit more, then run Whipfine because you can make a good trade. You can do 5 damage. But, uh, yeah, it, once you get beyond rank, you know, 15, you're never running Whipfine. Come on. Next, you got a Potatosaurus. So this is a very cool card. It's very, very expensive for just a stat card. It does conjure you. And then it also does grow every single turn. It's kind of growing late. It's not a great card to be using as a win condition. But, however, it is untrickable. So you play this big card. It's the only way they have to remove these cards. You know I mean? Like no, Umbrella Leaf, to be no, adding leave. that to a different card is not worth it as a whole card. But the whole card itself is untrickable. That's a lot better. Than Umbrella Leaf. Again, it's not foolproof. There's a lot of ways, like Deadly Minions, and, and you know, it can still be removed by minions. Laser Base Alpha is a weakness. Every once in a while, though, a Potato Saurus takes over a game because it's untrickable. You can do bonus attacks. You have to chump block it with usually things that don't really do a whole lot, and then it grows the next turn. And it also conjures you a card. Thank you to Black Dog. Welcome to the Prime Away. Insta wins against Boogaloo. It's tough to know where to put Potato Stars. I'm going to put it in B tier because of how often this actually takes over games. How much should you be putting it in your deck, though? I'll put it in B. I think it fits there. 
Bamboozle is an absolute trash garbage card. Six cost five, six, terrible stats. And then Plan Evolution, you sacrifice one of your plans and draw two cards for turn seven. It's like, it's like Mega Starch Lord. No, F tier for Bamboozle. <laughs> Don't draw cards on turn six. That's not the right time of the game. Plus, if this was just six, cost five, six, draw two cards. Let's say that. Okay. Okay. Maybe then, maybe there's something to talk about. It would still suck because why do you want to draw cards on turn six? But plant evolution, man, you got to kill one of your own guy. Keep that own guy on the field and keep bamboozle out of your deck. That's all I got to say. Super fat beat. So a very high potential card, obviously, in its stats. The problem is... There's only going to be consistent in a deck with a lot of little guys in it. Why are you running super fat beats? Again, now you run a swarm, then super fat beats, time to shine. I should probably do that deck, right? Be using their muscle sprout, because muscle sprout, they'll have a whole... Maybe I'll do super fat beats and muscle sprout and mushrooms, and then we'll just run time to shine and plan. We'll obviously have time to shine. We're on split P to get the time to shine, and we'll try to do that. And we'll run a couple plant foods and call it a day. Usually, it's not going to be useful in the deck. Every once in a while, it's amazing. But it's pretty trash card. You should basically never run super fat beats. It's too expensive for just a stat card. And then it just gets removed by Rocket Science. <laughs> Espresso Fiesta is a card that we never really found to use until we found that Chumzilla deck. Man, if you guys want to see a fun deck with Espresso Fiesta, look up the one. It was called like Troll TK. The Troll Espresso Fiesta. Just type in Espresso Fiesta Chumzilla on YouTube. It'll be the first thing. This does a lot. It's three bonus attacks. Every once in a while, you play. I mean, this. How many times have you just been winning and the opponent's press of yes, and then they're like, they're actually running that? They're actually were able to do 12, 15, 18 damage to me that turn? Come on, man. Uh, so we have found some actual top tier. I mean, that. That Chumzilla deck was ridiculous. So we actually have found some really, really solid use for Espresso Fiesta. It usually is too late, though, since it cost eight. It's very outclassed by plant food. Extremely outclassed. It's way better for four costs to do one bonus attack than to wait four more turns and to do three. Uh, this can break through a minion and then do a bonus and then do a bonus. Yeah, man. Oh, oh, that's a tough card to put on a tier list. I'm probably, I'm putting it more than C because it actually is a more useful card than all these C cause cards. Is it in B or A? It can't be an A. It's not even close to as good as the A cost. All right, it's going in solid B. Um, but really, guys, do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen the Chomsilla Espresso Fiesta deck I uploaded a few months ago. Please do that. All right, guys, that is going to be all for the Mega Grow class. If you really disagree with something, uh, either keep it to yourself or put it in the comment section below. I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say. Um, Mega Grow class overall, very much based around Gatling P and bonus attacks. Very good support class just for plant food, though. Like any other strategy, when you can put plant food on top of it, all of a sudden, raises the potential big time. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. This is Fry.